Number 15, The Mystery Stash in the Attic. This creepy mystery stash might serve as clues. For the likes of Sherlock Holmes, a new homeowner found that an attic's crawl space led to a secret room. What was in that room? Just what any mystery would call for, a locked briefcase in a safe. Inside the briefcase? Exactly what some escape artists would pack away. Loads of international banknotes, silver, two watches, two rings, and a box of mysteries. Inside the safe? Was it money, jewels? an old family heirloom, a treasure map? No, none of the above. VHS tapes were found inside, along with a note that read, Save Yourself. Was this some kind of cruel joke, or was it an honest warning? The only folks who know are those who watch the videos, or maybe they're all dead, a la The Ring style. Number 14, The Hidden Basement in the Outback. Now, there are creepy hidden rooms, and then there are even creepier hidden basements. That's what an Australian resident found beneath his living room carpet. After moving into his new home, the Aussie noticed that a patch of the carpet felt a little off, so he tore it up, three layers of it. Beneath this facade, he found an entrance to a secret room below deck, which had been boarded up. The brave man crept below his home into the mess of a basement. It was full of old bed frames, 24 of them to be exact, a recent newspaper, and even a fireplace, which looked to have been used not long ago. There were also power cables running from the upper rooms to the basement, implying that the creepy hidden cellar was, indeed, used for something. Why were there so many beds? Why the fireplace? Why did the previous owner go to such lengths to hide this secret basement underneath three layers of living room carpet? One can only guess what horrors might have happened there. Number 13, the toxic tunnel in the Brown's new home. Another Brown home mystery involves no codes whatsoever. In fact, it's fairly straightforward. Everyone who has been house hunting knows what it's like to be shuffled through dozens of prospective properties. Finding your dream home can be a nightmare, but what happens when you land your five-bedroom, two-bath house for an unbelievable price? You'd probably be over the moon that you snapped up such an awesome deal, but peel back the onion and you might just find that the deal wasn't as awesome as you thought. That's what happened to Carrie and Jason Brown in 2005. They'd just moved into a fantastic house and started renovations, which included moving a bookcase aside. But when they did, lo and behold, they found a hidden corridor that led to a creepy secret room. What what might they expect to find in this hidden room? A dungeon, dead bodies, a whole Narnia world unfolding before them? Nah, the Browns weren't fortunate enough for that. Instead, they discovered a secret note from the last homeowner, George Leventis, that told them the true story of this so-called sweet deal. I owned this house for a short while, the note read and it was discovered to have a serious mold problem, one that actually made my children very sick, to the point that we had to move out. According to Leventis, black mold had made the home uninhabitable, that one of his children couldn't breathe and was unable to hold any nutrition. Leventis didn't have enough money to pay his mortgage or sue, so he just ceased payments and moved his family and all of their belongings out of the moldy house. He didn't leave without warning the next homeowners, however. After calling the realtor who'd sold the house to him, who tried to contact the broker several times to warn about the home's toxicity, he received no response. So Leventis decided it was best to take the matter into his own hands and leave a note in the secret room where future owners were bound to find it and where the broker wouldn't crumple it up and throw it away. He didn't want anyone else to get sick like his children had. After hiring an engineer to screen the toxicity levels, the poisonous environment was confirmed, after which the Browns sued. Thank God for creepy secret rooms or this could have gone another way for the Browns. Number 12, the coffin-sized priest holes of Coton Court. Remember, remember the 5th of November. An English Tudor mansion seemed like it would be the perfect place for a creepy secret room, which is probably why one was found there recently when a group of scientists used 3D laser scanners to examine a gatehouse tower in Coton Court. The secret room, aka the priest hole, was connected with the 1605 gunpowder plot to kill King James I. The 16th and 17th centuries saw many Catholics persecuted as traitors. Due to England's anti-Catholic laws during that era, they were regularly tortured and killed, but many priests still made the rounds, performing their religion, ceremonies, and rites under the radar for those wealthy Catholics who still wanted to practice their religion, like those in Coton Court. In order for the priests to evade capture should their enemies be notified of their practices, priest holes were built in interior walls and floors of these English manor houses. The Coton Court priest hole was discovered in the 1850s. 
According to archaeologist Christopher King, we know that priests were hiding in these spaces for up to three days while people were searching the properties, and some of them are really very small. Where the priests would be in quite an enclosed box-like space, the laser scanners show that the chamber was constructed with a double blind. When searchers would comb over the lot, they'd open the first compartment thinking they'd discovered an empty priest hole. In reality, an even deeper compartment was constructed thereafter, so in Coton Court's tower turret, there is a pretend hole beneath the floor and a trapdoor that leads beyond into a real priest hole. Apart from hiding Catholic priests, Coton Court has a famed history. You've probably heard of Guy Fawkes and his plot to blow up the House of Lords at Westminster. Well, that entire plot was devised by Fox and his Catholic co-conspirators, one of whom, Sir Everard Digby, rented out Coton Court which would serve as the meeting place for the assassination date. November the 5th, 1605, those who had gathered there anticipated eminent news of the king's death. The gunpowder plot was discovered before the assassination could be carried out, and most of the gunpowder gang were caught, along with those who gathered and fled Coton Court. The plotters were later executed, but Coton Court, its towers, and its creepy secret rooms still stand. You can visit and relive the history of this place, and maybe even crawl into the priest hole and pretend you're hiding from King James. Number 11, The Secret Tunnels of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Okay, okay, the title to this entry is misleading. We're not really talking about the fictional school of Hogwarts here, but we are exploring an underground system of tunnels found by a group of misfits beneath the private boarding school that they called home. The group attended a 200-year-old boarding school built around an ancient castle. The tunnels they found were maintenance tunnels used to repair the old gas boiler that heated the school, or so the boys thought, playing hooky and sneaking away from their beds at night. The boys created a veritable marauder's map of their own school, measuring the tunnels with a measuring tape so that they could map it out to scale, but the underground tunnel system was even deeper and more complex than their time at the school would allow them to discover. The deeper that they went, the clearer it was that the tunnels were older than the school's boiler system, which were cement. The deeper tunnels were dangerous and led to locked rooms into the castle grounds, which were banned, and into the forbidden forest, er, or just the regular old forest, during their tenure at the private school. The intrepid explorers spent most of their time down below, painting the walls with shoe polish and smoking near the headmaster's office just out of sight. No doubt the school chums had the time of their lives. Number 10. The Room of Doom in Dunderdin the co-founder of Broderbund Software, Doug Carlston, and his partner, Miss Pierce, like a good creepy secret room, so much that he built 1,700 feet's worth in his Aspen home. To put that in perspective, you're looking at six football fields of twisted passageways, catacombs, and hidden swimming pools. The exterior log cabin is just a ruse to what's inside this mansion maze. Carlston, who created the PC game Myst, wanted to design it similarly to the puzzle piece adventure, so he did just that. Pull on a filing cabinet drawer, and you may find you've opened a hidden door. Pull out a dresser drawer and crawl into the secret passageway beyond. Miss Pierce described the construction as similar to programming. In programming, you start with a black screen and find your way out of it, she said. You're making a path. Then if someone else discovers that path, it's incredibly satisfying. The result is you're all building a secret world together. The secret room is chock full of creepy secret rooms, including the Room of Doom, in which you must squeeze behind a waterfall on a narrow rock cliff. If you're afraid of heights or darkness, beware. The only way out is to jump through the waterfall and land feet below in the swimming pool, or take a chance going down the dark tunnel slide that leads to who knows where. Creepy, but also super cool. Number 9. The Secret Office in the 70s Style Home One couple found a surprise in their new home. After they moved in, they noticed an insulation wall that appeared a little odd. Pushing aside the insulation, they discovered a doorknob that led them to the last owner's little secret, a creepy custom-built secret office or maybe a secret man cave. After all, it was built by the last owner's old frat buddy with customized appliances including a trash chute that led straight to the kitchen's trash bin. Did the man's wife know about it or not? He could have used it to disappear for hours on end without her ever realizing, or perhaps more went on in that secret room than we'll ever know. Number 8. The World War II Hideaway in Norway 
Some students who were sharing accommodation in Norway took a short break from their studies. The landlord had told the students that there was a secret room somewhere in the house, so they decided to go on an expedition to find it. After covering every square inch of each room, they gave up and kicked back to relax, which is when one of them accidentally nailed the attic wall just right with his feet, opening the doorway to the creepy secret room. The room is believed to be a relic of the World War II era, a hideaway for those fleeing Nazi persecution. Inside there's a sign in Norwegian that reads, If you have a bad stomach, then you don't have access. On the wall is plastered a map of Europe, while a lamp alarm designed to warn of intruders is nailed to another wall. To make this secret hideaway even creepier, a child's random white shoe was found abandoned on the attic floor, just creepy enough to send a shiver up your spine. Number 7. The Amazing Maze of the Brown Castle The novels of Dan Brown, author of such bestsellers as The Da Vinci Code and Inferno, are known for secret codes, passages, and creepy hidden rooms. So it may come as no surprise that he built his house to resemble this fantasy world. He gave Matt Lauer of The Today Show a tour of his castle, revealing some of the secret rooms that lie behind pictures and bookcases. Although not particularly disturbing, the amazing maze of a house might serve as some future inspiration for one of Brown's action-slash-mystery adventures, or it may become a real-life adventure for his future homeowners. Number 6. The Book Thief of Mont Santo Deal On top of the Vosges Mountains 760-meter high peak, France's Mont Saint Odile Monastery, otherwise known as Honenberg Abbey, served as a home many years ago to a group of monks. Fit with a 6 plus mile, 10 foot high pagan wall, the monastery was well fortified for any incoming invaders, and it served the monastery well. Since its foundation by Alderic, the Duke of Elsage, who built it sometime around the turn of the 8th century in memory of his daughter, Saint Odile, for whom the mountain was named. However, the original monastery was destroyed in the Middle ages and was only reconstructed in the 17th century. In 1853, the Bishop of Strasbourg acquired it and restored the monastery and church. Unfortunately, in its reconstruction, he didn't uncover the creepy secret passage that a future book thief uncovered. If he had, the nearly 1,100 precious medieval manuscripts, books, and treasures in the Covenant's library might have not been stolen. The theft occurred over a period of two years between 2000 and 2002. Once police were alerted to the valuables gone missing, they placed security cameras around the library to catch the perpetrator. What they found was astonishing. Stanislas Gos, a local teacher, had come across a map in city archives that showed a creepy chamber and passageway into the monastery. He wasn't out to steal and sell the books for profit, however. However, rather, according to him, his burning passion overrode his conscience. It may appear selfish, he said, but I felt the books had been abandoned. They were covered with dust and pigeon droppings, and I felt no one consulted them anymore. There was also the thrill of adventure. I was very scared of being found out. The entire the entire collection of books was stacked in his small apartment. The secret passageway behind a bookcase and opened by a hidden mechanism is thought to have been constructed so that the monastery's senior members could eavesdrop on the monks' conversations. Stanislas used the creepy secret passage and, in doing so, he received a fine and was required to do some community service, cataloging the library's books. No harm, no foul. Number 5. The Panic Room in John Hunt's House Ever heard of a panic room? Captain Jonathan Hunt may have invented it in 1710 when he constructed a secret passage in his home in Northampton, Massachusetts. The creepy secret room was built to hide his family away from Native Americans should things go sour. Now it's a legendary part of Smith College, where the home stands as a resident hall. There's even a creepy ghost story to go with it. Hunt's granddaughter often met her boyfriend who fought for the Redcoats during the Revolutionary War in the secret passage. She is now now said to haunt the place with all the wrath of a lover scorned. Number 4. The Creepy Cubby Holes of the Castle of Mysteries this castle of mysteries is a secret room paradise, full of passages and hideaways that even the most cynical adult could get on board with. Also known as the Singer Castle, this mansion was built in 1896 on Dark Island by the famed American architect, 
Ernest Flagg for the Singer Company's president. Yes, Frederick Bourne, the dude who made it big with sewing machines, also had a thing for creepy castles fitted out with dungeons and booby traps. What sorts of creepy secret rooms can you find in the Singer Castle? Stone staircases behind sliding walls that lead to who knows where, trap doors and maids quarters, and a dungeon with a black gate straight out of any imagined haunted house. Not so scary secret rooms include secret wine cellars, unless the bottles are actually filled with blood. Nothing scary about that, and a treasure room with only a small latch to enter, one designed like a coat hook so that no one can gain access to the treasure, unless you try every coat hook in the place, that is. There are also paintings throughout the home that are designed to allow the host to eavesdrop on his guests. Was born worried that folks might be talking smack about his sewing machines or his burnt ham and potatoes. He's been dead for nearly a century, so I guess we'll never know. Number 3. The Servant's Kitchen in the Manor House the Graham Palmer home is like any other centuries-old manor house. It looks like your average cottage, but beneath everything that's old, there's a history just waiting to be discovered. When digging below his estate, Archie Graham Palmer found that history in the form of a kitchen. Similar to the servants' quarters you might be familiar with from Downton Abbey, the findings below were as prim and proper as they get down to very servant bells that could summon the peons to aid the manor's owners. The secret hidden kitchen was made creepier by the fact that it looked as though it had been abandoned on the spur of a moment. The pig spit was set above the stove. A cookbook from 1911 filled with recipes that could feed an army was on display, and pots and pans and dishes were strewn about. There was even a large heavy table for the servants to dine at. Just imagining being a servant in this creepy kitchen gives me the heebie-jeebies. Number 2. The Secret Rooms in the Winchester Mystery House one of San Jose, California's claims to fame is the strange Winchester Mystery House. Perhaps it's not too surprising that this house was constructed by Sarah Winchester, the widow of famed Winchester gun industrialist William Winchester. After the deaths of her husband and daughter, a medium advised Sarah to build the mystery house, who said that the souls of those who were killed by Winchester guns were out to get her. The medium claimed, You must never stop building the house. If you continue building, you will live forever, but if you stop, then you will die. And so Sarah began her construction. She did eventually die 38 years later. Later, but not before building a house with 161 rooms, 9 kitchens, 40 stairways, 13 bathrooms, 47 fireplaces, 2,000 doors and 10,000 windows. With no master plan in place, the house literally holds so many mysteries we may never discover every hidey hole. In fact, only recently was a secret attic room discovered by the house's administrators, one which Sarah had boarded up due to superstition after an earthquake hit San Francisco. Cracking open the room, the administrators found a number of paintings, a pump organ, a sewing machine and dress form, and a Victorian couch. To make the house even creepier, it's said to be one of the most haunted places in the United States. There are certainly more mystery rooms to discover inside this enormous mansion of lost souls. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT. I also have a Twitter at YTChills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. Number 1. The Murder Castle of H.H. Holmes Perhaps the creepiest house on this list is H.H. H. Holmes' Murder Castle in Chicago. The real-life serial killer built the hotel with plenty of creepy rooms, trap doors, and passageways in order to do what he did best, kill unsuspecting hotel guests. Although not a home per se, Holmes did live in the hotel, which he built around 1889 in anticipation for the World's Fair in 1893, which would bring lots of fresh meat to Chicago. He went to work purchasing an empty lot and building a three-story hotel upon it, which people began calling the castle due to its enormous size. He put in a drugstore on the ground floor, which was just for show. The upper floors included a labyrinth with his offices, stairwells that led nowhere, doors that opened to walls of brick, and various other illusionary constructions to drive his guests mad before he killed them. He hired various construction companies to complete the project so he was the sole person who knew the true blueprint of the castle. With the help from criminal carpenter Benjamin Pitzel, Holmes selected victims, mainly female, both employees and guests, whom he would eventually kill, while Pitzel would help dispose of the bodies. The extent of evil in this man is renowned. 
He built soundproof rooms that asphyxiated his victims with gas, a secret hanging chamber, rooms in which he locked his victims until they starved to death, and an airless vault where he would slowly suffocate some. Then their dead bodies were carelessly disposed of in a chute that led to the basement, where he stripped their skeletons and sold them to medical schools, making a quick buck off their murder. Holmes was eventually caught, but not before he tortured and killed hundreds of men, women, and children. The castle burned down not long after Holmes was captured, after which a post office was built in its place. One thing's for sure, I wouldn't want to work in that post office.